The price of freedom is death. We are coming to get our check. B1 salute to all the brothers and sisters watching this. Thank you very much. If you guys have not subscribed already, please make sure you do so. Make sure you like the broadcast and make sure you guys share it on your various social media platforms. Thank you very much. All of your support, all of your likes, all of your subs, everything that you guys do, all of the comments, everything that is greatly appreciated because it really does help the channel grow. And that's what we're trying to do, especially since the year is ended, rounding up. We're really trying to help this channel grow as much as possible. And with you guys support, it really does help that. It, that's what really takes it there. So thank you guys from me to you. Thank you. Now, what we're going to get into today is a comment that Chuck Schumer said in an interview or not an interview. I guess it was like a press conference or something, but I thought it was very interesting and I wanted to break it down. But without any further ado, let's play the actual video. Now more than ever, we're short of workers. Uh, we have a population that is not reproducing it on its own with the same level that it used to. The only way we're going to have a great future in America is if we welcome and embrace immigrants, the dreamers, and all of them, because our ultimate goal is to help the dreamers but get a path to citizenship for all 11 million or however many undocumented <laughs> there are here. Now more than ever, we're short of workers. Now, not only is what he said factually incorrect, but I really want to break down why he said what he said and what is the true agenda and motive behind getting uh, illegals citizenship. What, what is the true agenda behind that? Now, he says now more than ever, we need workers that we don't have. We, we just don't have these workers in the country already so we need to bring them from outside of the country so let's actually look at the unemployment numbers because it's not that we have um americans and we just have more work than we have people we have a whole lot of people who do not have work especially black americans so actually let's look at the unemployment rate at, of black americans and let's see how true it is that we need workers from outside of america First quarter 2022 trends among black workers. At the national level, black workers saw an unemployment rate of 6.5%, still slightly higher than their 2020 Q1 rate of 6.2. Georgia 5.0 and Florida 5.3 saw the lowest rates among those states with large enough samples to analyze. No state saw a black unemployment rate below 5%. The black unemployment rate remained above 10% in D.C. and Illinois at 12.5 and 12.2 respectively. Less than half of states for which data are available had black unemployment rates less than or within one percentage point of their pre-pandemic rate. The national black-white unemployment ratio remained unchanged at 2.2 to 1, reconfirming one of the most persistent trends in this area of research. This ratio remains highest in D.C., where it rose sharply over the previous quarter. A 31% decline in white unemployment combined with the persistent high black unemployment to bump the ratio to 7.2 to 1. In contrast, the black-white unemployment ratio in the neighboring state of Maryland was the lowest in the country at 1.3 to 1. This again points to the unique nature of D.C. labor market and its emphasis on white collar federal employment. Reading off those statistics, wouldn't it make more sense for you to give the jobs to the citizens, the black American citizens who are facing higher unemployment than any other group, any other dynamic? In this country, wouldn't it make more sense to give them the jobs than to bring people over from outside of this country, from foreign lands, and then give them citizenship so they can work the jobs that we need to be worked? How does that make sense? It's like you're working backwards or it's like you're lying. 
because when you talk about citizenship, you're not talking about any and every citizenship because we can look at Haiti, the situation where the Haitians were at the Texas border and they were getting whipped by horseback. They were getting whipped by white men on horseback like it was slavery in the 17 and 1800s. So if you're being racially and ethnically specific to the people that you want to come over here and you don't want to give the people who are already here and already looking and desperate for jobs the work, what really is it? So let's look back at the clip. And I want you guys to pay attention to one crucial thing that he says, and that pretty much explains to you his whole agenda and why he's doing this and why the Democrats are pushing this. Now more than ever, we're short of workers. Uh, we have a population that is not reproducing it on its own with the same level that it used to. That is the point. That is what he said. We have a population that is not producing the same way that it used to. And you saw his hand signal. That means they're not giving birth. They're not having babies at the same rate that they're used to. But you have to think about it. Which dynamic, which group of people are not having babies the way they used to? Let's look at the actual data and the studies to show exactly which dynamic of people are not having babies, are not as fertile as they need to be. It says here, why deaths exceed births in majority of U.S. states. Goes on to say, in 2016, more non-Hispanic whites died than were born in 26 states, more than at any time in U.S. history. Some 179 million residents or roughly 56% of the U.S. population, lived in these 26 states, in contrast, non-Hispanic whites, hereafter referred to as whites, deaths exceeded births in just four states in 2004, and 17 as recently as 2014. White deaths also exceed white births in the nation as a whole for the first time in U.S. history in 2016 according to data from the Natural Center of Health Statistics. When births fail to keep pace with deaths, a region is said to have a, quote, natural disease in population, which can only be offset by migration gains. In 17 of the 26 states with white natural disease, the white population diminished overall between 2015 and 2016. Our analysts of the demographic factors that cause white natural disease suggest that more states are likely to experience it in the future. Looking at further data, it goes on to say, as white births diminish, white deaths increase. Between 1999 and 2016, the number of white births fell by 10.8% to 2,094,000 and the number of white deaths rose by 9.2% to 2,133,000. Both these demographic changes contributed to warning levels of natural increase and the onset of white natural disease. The place of decline in white births intensified from 2007 to 2016, due in part to the Great Recession's significant impact on U.S. fertility. The recession, the greatest shock to American economic system in nearly two generations, influenced both fertility and life cycle decisions for many families. Looking at the data, you can clearly tell where the white births are steadily and sharply declining and their deaths are sharply and steadily increasing. So much so, so around 2015, it kind of evened out. And now in 2016, you see the death rates are higher than the birth rates. And this is in 2016. We're right now in 2022. So this is pre-pandemic. So there's no telling what these numbers are now. But this was what it was um, back in 2016. So it's much worse for them right now. And they're very concerned about this. But just in case you needed even more confirmation even Joe Biden himself, out of his own mouth, said that that is something that he is concerned with. This country is doomed. 
It is doomed, not just because of African Americans, but because by 2040, this country is going to be minority white European. You hear me? Minority white European. And you guys are going to have to start working more with Hispanics, who make up a larger portion of the population than y'all do. There you have it. They're worried about the white birth rates that are going down because they're recessive people from a recessive community. They have recessive genes and they can't have babies like they used to, like they need to. The deaths are increasing and the births are decreasing so much so that now you have more deaths, a higher death rate than you have a higher birth rate. So this is why, and I said this in a previous broadcast before, this is why they reverse Roe v. Wade, because they all like, you know what, all of that white women getting abortions, that's got to stop. We need that to stop immediately. You, the recessive women, y'all need to have as many babies as y'all physically can, because y'all can't get pregnant like that no more. So the, the times y'all do, y'all can't be going and getting abortions. We need y'all to have them babies. That's why they're bringing in Hispanics, because a lot of Hispanics not only have the same anti-black racism that the Europeans do because they want to be Spaniards and Span Spain is in Europe. So they want to be just like them. Not only that, a lot of them identify as white. A lot of them do. So they are going to pass the torch. They're trying to pass the baton to Spaniards. They're tr the, not Spaniards, uh, Hispanics. They're trying to pass the baton to Hispanics. So that's why they're bringing them over to Chicago, to New York, to other places in America by the busload, giving them preferential treatment, not because America needs workers like Chuck Schumer said, but because they know that their numbers, the white numbers are going down. If we know our history, this is the same thing that they did when they did the Homestead Act in the 1800s. Back in the day, Italians, they were not considered white. Uh, Irish, they were not considered white. Polish, they were not considered white. But they needed more white numbers. So what they did was they bought them over and they said, you know what? We are going to allow you to be classified as white. And now they're all white now. They do the same thing with Hispanics. They didn't classify them as white before, but when they needed the numbers to maintain their power, to maintain this racial hierarchy that we're living in, they needed those numbers, so they gave them that classification. And they're trying to do the same thing with Hispanics. So that's why they want to bring them over here. They want to give them citizenship. They want to give them preferential treatment so they can have an economic base, so they can be the new oppressor class. Brothers and sisters, thank you guys for watching. If you guys have anything to say, please let me know in the comments section below. Please, if you guys haven't subscribed, please make sure you do subscribe. Uh, hit that notification bell because my notifications really don't go out. I'm not saying it's YouTube, Damn, it's YouTube. but the notifications don't go out, but that's okay because you guys can also follow me on my social media. The link is in the description below. It's Afro Elite on Instagram and the Afro Elite on Twitter. You can follow me there anytime I post a video or go live. I always make sure I make a tweet or I make a post so people can tune in live or they can catch whatever video broadcast or any other post that I make. So you can follow me on my social media and subscribe to the channel. Please make sure you like as well too. Thank you very much because all of this helps the channel grow. It makes the channel, makes the platform bigger. So I appreciate all of your support. I sincerely do. But with that being said, you all have a good one. Let me know what you think in the comment section below.